Well, swapped out the old screen door uh, for the glass door. So yeah, now I got a glass door at the front. There's, there's the bad cat. Cat, look up, buddy. So this is going to be the next rod build right here. I've got a metallic orange blank. This is a MHX FP885. This is for Happy Jack, a little simple jack. And uh, we're going to basically build it to look like a, an old-fashioned carrot stick. So I've kind of got, um, kind of got the handles at least. Uh, so, or the grip size and everything measured out. So that'll be our next rod build. Happy Jack's gonna be over here. He's gonna help do it. It's gonna be fun to watch him try to wrap a guide because he's never done it. And I sure know I was bad at it when I first got started. So yeah, that'll be coming soon, hopefully. There it is, my nemesis. Not today, son. Not your day. You ain't ruining this video. Something else might but not the laundry. Hey guys, welcome back to the world's worst fishing somewhere up there. I'm Chris Jones and uh, <clears throat> hope everybody is staying safe out there. Um, yeah, times are, times are very strange indeed. Um, so I hope you're managing absolutely as best as possible. Um, we're doing okay here in Tallahassee. So luckily, <clears throat> luckily the county that we're in, so we're in Leon County, Luckily, we still don't have very many cases, and uh, the weather's getting hot in Florida, and that kind of usually signals the end of flu season, and uh, everything that I'm reading, you know, the coronavirus will kind of weaken uh, in the heat. It won't last as long on surfaces, um, therefore not transmit as much, so really trying to be optimistic over here, but that's enough about that. Today we're going to be back on the hand pour molds, back on the heat griddle, <clears throat> and um, I've been really working lately on trying to get a really natural shad color. Not necessarily the most bright, flashy thing uh, with all the fanciest um, materials, but just a good um, natural color. Kind of like the green color shift shad. Um, that's a really, really natural color. So today we're going to do a lot of things similar to that. Um, but I'm just going to try to take it another step further, maybe add another vein or line, add a, add a different color. So, <clears throat> um, I've got something in mind, so hopefully it works and, um, let's get started. All right. So here's our setup. So I've got some dead on plastic, black bucket craw tube blend. That's what I really like to pour, uh, larger swim baits with. Now, if this was like a five inch or something like that. Um, I might back it back down to the swim bait blend or mix the two together. You know, you can virtually create your own durometer um, blending any plastics that you want. You know, you can you can um, <clears throat> take saltwater blend and mix it with craw tube blend, craw tube, mix it with swim bait, and just kind of go down the line and, and, you know, make your own blends, right? So, <clears throat> you know, you could have, you could even have your, your own special mix for each size. Like, this is my 5-inch swim bait blend. This is my, you know, 10 inch worm blend, you know, just how crazy you want to get with it. Um, for me, the craw tube works really well for this. So that's what we uh, usually do. So no different today. Uh, now I already have some black um, remelt here and that's just for the little dots um, on the shad. So we are going to be doing a <clears throat> dotted shad color. And I've just got a few powders here. I've got some blue highlight, some gold uh, powder some Hobby Lobby special, really good stuff there, some purple, some green highlight, <clears throat> and then some regular black pigment. Um, you'll notice there's no fancy color shift. I, for, for what I'm trying to do, I, I don't think I need a color shift, although uh, that would, would always look cool. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with, stick with this right here. I think I can get what, what, what I'm trying to do. I've, I've already kind of practiced this a little bit. Um, but I'm going to do something a little different, um, for the video here and hope that it works better. So, um, we're going to heat up this, uh, black remelt and then we're going to dot <clears throat> our molds and kind of go from there. All right. And real quick, um, if you've seen some other videos like this, you've seen this step, but this is the part that really, really will test your patience. 
just pouring a little dot here right behind the gill that's actually a little big for how I normally pour it but uh, that's okay I would usually try to get it a little bit smaller let's see yeah perfect 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 and one thing I'll say about this um, that's actually a really thin mixture of black if you just look up here it's not very thick and um, if you're gonna try this look at home um, and of course you don't have to pour a dot you can skin pour it however you want but uh, <clears throat> I think it looks best when the dot is not too thick so don't mix up your black super 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 thick and then then the rest of your bait is see-through I just I think it'll look a little bit better if it's uh, if the dot isn't as thick it'll just kind of blend in with the colors around it a little bit more naturally well I almost got them in a perfectly straight line that's not bad that's how I can tell if I accurately dotted them or not is uh, <laughs> is if they line up decently which that's pretty good I think these are gonna be nice okay so here is our belly plastic and like a lot of shad colors the bottom is just blue highlight no actual pigment to speak of and it's just a smidge barely there just enough to give it a little bit of blue shine and that's all we want we want it to be very translucent all right so i'm pouring this belly color here and i'm uh at least attempting to pour it shallower so i'm not I'm actually not going to pour it past the top of the hook slot because I'm going to add two veins and I don't want the veins to be so high up on the bait that they spill over into the tail. Now sometimes your vein spills over into the tail and it looks really really good. Um, however I'm going to attempt not to do that. But uh, I'm actually, you know, I don't have a whole lot of experience pouring two veins yet. So exactly where to pour this belly is still a little bit up in the air for me but as you can see you know especially there on the end that insert is still sticking up a little bit so hopefully that's uh that's what we need to do we'll kind of move the camera slightly yeah so beautiful belly color though okay so the two veins are going to be gold and purple and i'm literally just going to use straight colors from each one and the trick here for me is to not use too much because it is so easy to use too much and then you kind of lose the the diamond see-through effect um, that you kind of want so you know small amounts of plastic here you really want small amounts of powder so we're gonna mix that in and you can see how thin that is. I don't mind that. You, you kind of want it to look like it's there, but also not look like it's there. Okay, so now we're pouring the, uh, the gold vein. Okay. So just enough that it kind of flows where we want it to off the back end. You might get see it better on these last two cavities here. So we want it to go right up to about the eye socket, but just over the back of the belly color in the tail section. And then we're gonna pour the purple vein on top of this one. So basically what I have here, let me uh, zoom out a bit, yeah. Here's what we have, you can see the top one, the yellow went really, or the gold went really far. And that's without the next vein, so that one's definitely spilling over into the tail. Like I said, still a little new at this, but um, wanted to show it because I, I think it's going to be really, really cool once it's done. And, uh, you know, it never hurts to show the learning curve and, and your boo-boos. You know, you're not going to pour these things perfect um, every time, especially your first few times. And, you know, even I'm, or even I'm not pouring this exactly how I wanted it, uh, wanted it to come out. So definitely challenging, but that's what makes this so much fun. And one thing to keep in mind, you know, timing is still really important on the heat griddle um, it's not it's not an issue of you got to pour them real fast or else they're going to set up and delaminate 
the, the heat takes care of that, but it also means that your plastic is, is gonna be gooier longer. So this next color is ready. However, I can't pour it yet or else it will just mix in with that gold and it'll mess up the whole layered effect. Um, so, you know, timing, timing is definitely important. I like, I like to let them sit a few minutes apart because um, if you go, you know, even if you have all your cups ready, if you just go into pour layer after layer, well, you'll just get a bunch of thermal blending instead of a nice clean layer. All right, let's try this purple layer and just see what happens. This one over here is going to be bad. It's 100% going to go off the rails, but that's okay. Kind of expecting it now. Yeah. Want just enough that it kind of flows down. You know what? Even that may not be quite ready yet because it's pushing that gold plastic that way. Yeah, see that? No bueno. I don't mind the purple going down in the tail, but as you can see, the uh, gold wasn't set up enough. So that next layer is just pushing that gold. That gold shouldn't be that runny anymore. That purple should have just flowed right over the top, which tells me I'm gonna bump the heat down on my griddle and uh, let the gold set up a little more so that hopefully these uh, final four will uh, turn out the way that we want them to. All right, so hopefully we'll have better luck here. Funny how I messed that up literally right after talking about timing. So shows what I know. But we're going to carry on here. You know, pouring these veins and such. It's, it's, it's such a feel thing, you know. Just, just trying to feel out the plastic and how it's going to run. You never really know, I guess, how it's going to do. Looks like that first one still didn't work the way I wanted it to. Man, is this still not ready? I was blowing on it and it had a, a really set up skin. What the heck? These are just not doing good for me today. Well, this is kind of embarrassing. I didn't get any one of these to work all the way or to work right. We're going to finish them out anyway and then I'm doing all this over. Not going to end on a bad note. But we're going to build the top color and uh, these will at least be a test run to see if, to see if I like what it's going to look like in the first place. So, yeah. I did not have this problem yesterday when I was pouring the two vein effect with some different colors. I don't know. Just not living right today, I guess. All right, so I'm still gonna show you what I think is what I want for the top color. So it's gonna be a charcoal gray base. So with that amount of plastic, probably three drops of black. That's just regular black colorant. Just some regular Lure Works Black. So we'll get that started. Yeah. Just, just a charcoal gray. One of the most versatile colors right there. You can do so much with that. And then we're gonna add a very small amount of green highlight. I love this combination <clears throat> of charcoal gray and green highlight because the highlight is comes out really well against that black as you can see right there you know and shad have lots of grays and greens purples golds blues in them and that's kind of why we're choosing these colors here in this video is to try to really make something that looks a lot like a shad and that's that's probably actually a little bit too much green so but we're gonna try that. We're gonna go with it. I'm gonna pop that back in the microwave for 20 seconds or so. And uh, we'll go ahead and pour the top layer and uh, chalk these up to a, to a big fat failure. All right, so we're gonna finish off the tops here. Hopefully these look good, guys. Sorry for sucking today. Obviously just not, yeah, I'm even over pouring. This is a disaster. Yeah, if you were new to pouring uh, don't use this video as a how-to. This can be, this, this is, this is essentially blooper footage over here. You can use this as, uh, 
when you want to laugh at somebody trying to pour baits, that's obviously sucking. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, I tell you, I like uh, I like the color a lot. Let's check it out. Yeah, what do, what do you guys think? I actually need to go a little more see through. Let's uh, let's get a better angle on this. I always feel like if I uh, bring it out here, it's in the light a little bit better. Yeah. You can really see the blue highlight in the belly. How it just kind of, it just kind of plays tricks on you, which uh, honestly was the, was the intent. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I should pour the same thing again. All right, y'all see that? We started over and the dots are even in a straighter line is what it looks like to me. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can do this better. I've got the bellies poured. I poured them a little lower, I think, so I'm hoping that that will look good. Um, let me show you what I did get. Obviously, you've already seen one, but there's the group right there. So still a really, really awesome looking bait. Um, but these are officially rejects, so to speak. Uh, if you want the reject baits, yeah, I mean, you, I'll, I only got five here. I'll, I'll give these away for like 25 bucks for all of these. All right, first layer down, got our uh, gold, gold mica powder layer. Now we're gonna work on uh, the purple next. And then uh, I think we're gonna do sort of more of a blue top. Not sure yet. Okay, so this is already looking better. This is kind of what it should have looked like the first time. So we're just gonna pour a little bit there and let's watch it work. So just rolled over the back. Hopefully it won't go too far towards the tail, but the front didn't go all the way up. It, it still might go all the way up. Kind of once it goes over that gold, it'll flatten out and it'll push back up towards the head, but that's okay. As you can see, I'm pouring these layers relatively cool. You know, this, this purple plastic you can just tell by looking at it, it's not super hot. Yeah, you can just watch the way it flows. And this just allows me to control it a little bit better. When it's super hot and thin, it'll just really, it'll just really run in each direction a lot faster than maybe you want it to. And a lot farther than maybe you want it to. So we're gonna hope that that works. And uh, yeah, these are already looking better than the first run. All right, so now we're filling in the tops, and what I've done here is you can see there's a lot of blue and turquoise. That is two different color shifts blended. That is ZTG and this Bionic stuff. So it kind of gives like a nice turquoisey green top, um, which I think will complement this color, hopefully. So hopefully we can pour these a little bit better this time, uh, at least the top layer and not have a bunch of overspill. But uh, most importantly, hopefully these baits will look better. So far they've been poured much better, much more clean. The layers are all right where they're supposed to be. They didn't bleed over or anything like that. So I am actually really excited to see these now. Wasn't so excited on that first run. That first run was not pretty, but hopefully these will turn out and uh, hopefully uh, this video will have been worth your while, so fingers crossed and we'll meet you right back. All right, drum roll please. Let's see how we did. Ooh, still a wee bit hot. Uh, oh yes, look at that, you guys. It's like a... Oh yeah. What do y'all think? Well, just to contrast it, here's what we did earlier. It's very, 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 eh, very similar. Just poured clean. Well, actually it's totally similar because the bottom three colors, so the purple, the gold, and then the belly, of course, are virtually the same. 
The only thing I changed on the top was I added the color shift effect to it. So you can really kind of see the differences there. Um, and I like the aqua kind of blue. Yeah, look at all the different colors happening there. Yeah, let's uh, zoom in a bit. Yeah, I like the gold. The gold line's real thin. I poured it hot. Yeah, look at that. Look at kind of some of the tricks that it plays on you. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Let's get the rest of them out and take a look. Okay, guys, there it is. So that is what we were able to come up with. And uh, again, mostly the same thing as this, just a little bit different top. So I'm curious, um, which one do you guys like the best? Which which one do you think is is the better looking bait? And I'll kind of show you what I was um, looking at when thinking about this color. I had found a really cool picture of of a thread fin shad. Maybe it'll come into focus. Yes, if you look at that one, and it, it, of course you're not really going to be able to see, you know, the camera's not going to pick up this phone screen as well. You can kind of see the turquoise greenish top, you know, obviously the dot, lots of pink and purple hues on the bottom. So that's kind of what we were thinking about um, whenever, uh, whenever I came up with this. So um, yeah, hope you guys like the bait. Let's just grab one out here and really get some more angled looks at it there. Yeah, really cool. Oh, you know what? Let me throw an eyeball on one of them just so we'll see the full effect. There we go. And it's amazing what an eyeball does, huh? Absolutely, I think, my best shad color that I've done yet. Now, a lot of people like the green color shift shad that I do, which I, I, I love that one as well. I don't, I don't blame you guys for liking that one. This one just, I think the way the gold and that purple vein interact together, um, it just adds a few more colors to the palette that you see in Threadfin Shad. So I don't think a bass is going to look at one or the other and be like, I'm not biting that. But uh, yeah, always trying to get better at what we do. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I know we've been doing a lot of hand pouring and swim baits lately, um, but that's, um, that's just kind of where, where I'm practicing the most. Um, you know, we'll definitely do some more fun things, break out the big Mondo injector. And, uh, and really bang out a ton of stuff because um, that's super fun. Uh, kind of like uh, when I did the 300 stick bait uh, for uh, 30,000 subs. <clears throat> that's fun, just piling up these big, massive piles of baits. Um, but anyway, no, just uh, the takeaway from today's video, I guess, would be um, try new things and don't be afraid to suck at it and fail. You know, that first pour was a disaster, you know. There's... Not much else that can go wrong during a pour like that. I, I pretty much checked all the boxes off on how to not pour correctly. So, you know, and, and, and there again, that just goes to show you can get the molds too hot and things won't really stack the way you want. But, you know, depending on what kind of look you want, you can use that to your advantage. So, um, as it's, it's, it's crazy because when I first started pouring on the heat griddle, you know, it was still relatively cold. It was, you know, my shop was in the 40 degree range, um, sometimes colder than that. And um, there's a helicopter going overhead. And just that would, would affect how warm my molds got quicker. So I, I or slower. So I, I think they're getting hotter quicker now. So I need to dial back my temperature a little bit because the molds are staying hotter for longer. Um, and that's um, playing with my... Uh, playing with my viscosity a little bit. So with that said, shoot me lots of comments down below. Let me know which one was your favorite, the suck pour or the really good pour. You know, there again, the color is basically the same, just a few small changes, but uh, just a few small changes are the difference in a really great pour and a really bad pour. So um, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. Stay safe out there.